that indicate this whole muscular Christianity movement um, is surfacing again. So that's a recap. And let's go back now and look at what these gems during the muscular Christianity period, what were they? Now, would that be fun or what? Basic premise, very difficult to get fit on the ground. Why? What force in nature molds tissue? Constant. Who said it? Somebody said it starts with a G. Gravity, it's constant. You're living clay. You must train off the ground. I see you have TRX now, so guess what? We're rediscovering off the ground training, aren't we? But that's what it used to look like. Now, this fellow here is Friedrich Jan. If you want to understand modern physical training, you need to go back to this guy around 19, oh, oh, in about 19, I forgot, 1906, I think it was. He ends up at the Battle of Jena where the French devoured his countrymen. He's on the run. He's a seditious fellow. They're looking for him. He's hiding out up near Berlin. Starts taking these youngsters out on long, long walks and building these confidence structures. And he, he tells them, everywhere I've gone in my country, I see decay. We don't appreciate our language anymore. We're lazy. They even had gang colors in the, in the schools. And if you had the wrong colors, you'd, you'd fight in the universities. Does that sound familiar? Gang colors during his period of life. Well, take a look at uh, all the different systems that came out of this. And it got big. After Napoleon was defeated in 1813, I think it was, wasn't it? 1815, 1813. This became a staging ground where the Germans began to ask for freedom from the monarchs. That didn't go over well. Jan ended up in prison or under house arrest, but it didn't stop the movement. It got bigger and bigger. And it was as much based upon the moral imperative for personal fitness um, as it was a social consciousness. So they had a revolution, and they didn't do very well because the monarchs had the money and the guns. So guess what? Thousands of them unloaded and came to the States. And a lot of them ended up on the corner of Third and Scott in a place called Davenport, Iowa, just across the Mississippi River. And they built one of these Turner Halls. And I grew up in that Turner Hall because it lasted long after. And I was born right after World War II, and it was still around. And that's what it looked like on the inside. But it wasn't a place where a little boy could go in there and mess around. A lot of discipline. I never went there to play, I went there to learn. And if I didn't, I was reminded quickly. I'd get hammered. In fact, take a look here. Can you see this thing? That's a balance beam on a rope. Is that cool? Well, let's see, this is called a giant stride. So you, you start running, you're off the ground, and you can climb the rope, or you can do all kinds of cool stuff on it. So take a look here. Which of these is the easiest? Three rules. You can write these down. This is important as you go out and train your, your students down the road. You check your, your training. Progression, variety, and precision. So what's the progression down here? You see which one you would do first? I'm pretty close to it, aren't I? It'd be the easiest, wouldn't it? Right? And then maybe one of these two, this one, this one. See the difference here? This one, if you step the wrong way, this is going to tip downward. It's just crossed on the rope there. This one is more stable. So it might be this one next. You see the difference between these pipes? This one is secured to the ground. This one isn't. So this one is easier. So this is progression. Indian clubs. You guys have some of those now. Um, all kinds of stuff which you're seeing recurring today. This is called a flag. All the kids that I knew do it, were doing this by the age of 10. We just learned. All the way to San Diego. That gym would hold about 350 people. That was, I believe, the New York YMCA. 
Now this is from Britain. They had some similar stuff, but look at this. They even, it was like stock car races. They had spectators up there. You see these people hanging? Gee, what are they there to see? And why were these Brits up on all these ropes and these webbings? Hmm? They were on ships. That's how they traveled. And there they are storming the castle back there. Another one. This one's a little kinky. I, you know, look at this stuff. Look at these, like, butt floss or whatever they call them. <laughs> so there must have been an underbelly to this stuff, too. This one's out of New York or somewhere. That was, but if you, if you go beyond that, you can see the good use of angles on the, on the push-up. You can see the grappling's pretty strong. Good extension on the lunge. You can learn a lot by studying these photos. Wand drills back here. One-arm dumbbell presses. Well, this is what gyms look like. Now, what does that tell you about the, the purpose of a gymnasium at the turn of the century? Very powerful, weren't they? They had a very important purpose in the country. And there, where is that? That's Ohio State University. But that's what they look like. This guy is Brocious, George Brocious. And that's what he looked like when he was my age. And this is where he taught. He was one of the teachers, one of the head teachers of the German system that came over. Who brought, who created that system? What was his last name? The guy with the beard from Germany? Jan, wasn't it? Friedrich Jan. Look him up. And yes, the women trained too. So on over here, this is, this is George Brocious again. And there's Jan, right? And this guy is Hermann Kerler, or Keller. This is the first international gymnastics team in the United States. He was the coach. He was his nephew. And this was one of the first teams. This was the first team. Well, Keller was hired to, be, to create the Army physical training, modern Army physical training in 1885. So when you look at West Point, and you see it's pretty good body weight training, huh? Dumbbell drills, Indian clubs, um, partner training with uh, weighted wands, more dumbbells, med balls, plyometrics, jumping, climbing, and why? It was all functional. Now, this guy, anybody in athletic training, you need to know who P.H. Ling, Per Heinrich Ling. His, he was born in 1776, created the Swedish system. This guy brought it over in 1885. Ling was long gone, but Nils Posse did a great job. This was a standard. This is not the Cirque du Soleil. This is a neighborhood Swedish gymnastics skill. Can you see the attention to detail on extension? Hmm? They just weren't leaning backward. They were leaning backward with purpose. Spotter in the back and a clean lunge. Pretty good standard for mobility, huh? It wasn't a national team. That was a neighborhood team. Now this guy, Nils Buke, he takes it to Denmark. And those are called what? Anybody know? Stall bars. Remember that. You'll see them again in your lifetime. So what's going on there? The, this person on the right opening the, the chest, huh? See that? Both of them are actually opening the chest. See how he's stabilizing the hips, opening the chest, you see? Stall bars. Now, free uh, partner training. Double pipe. Actually, double rope, up to the heaving beam, down, into the headstand, into the forward roll, and out. Kip up, turn, go to the back, down to here, and then come off on the front and land out there. Basic series. See how the heaving beams open the chest? Tons and tons of patterns on the heaving beams. Czechoslovakian, a guy named Tears. He's got his restorative and his martial. You see that? Remember those? Components, restorative and martial, there they are. Actually, pretty ugly circles, if you look at it carefully. They could have done a lot better. This is before tubing, cables against the walls. What do you see going on here? See these traveling rings? You fly from one to the other, down the row and back. What's this? What's going on there? What is that? Still do it today. It used to be an Olympic event. Tug of war. See it? I wasn't in the Olympics, by the way. 
is a lost Olympic event. Clubs. Stall bars again, horizontal ladder over here. To music. William G. Anderson, medical doctor. Great book, up to 500 bucks now if you can find it. Banana rope. Even up in the, monast uh, the uh, cloisters of cathedrals, these things popped up during the er period of muscular Christianity. Lots of stuff you see today. You see the L seat on the mini P bars. They still sell them on TV. Basic jumping, right? Nothing new, huh? <coughs> Plyometrics for distance. One-legged squats. 